Welcome back to the Boy to Man podcast, where we help you go from boy to man in mind, body, heart, and soul. And uh, welcome to episode five. Welcome. So we just recently got back from a trip to Toronto, and uh, it was actually Jordan's first time ever mm-hmm. in Toronto, uh, actually going and like hanging out. And, uh, and so why were we there? We were there to, well, su- support above men. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, your, your gathering, um, the coaching group, um, sc- scaling pretty hard and a lot of impact going on. So mm-hmm. first event out in, was that your first event? That was your second event? Like second, that, yeah. But in, but the the for the from the first one to the second one, it was completely different, completely different right. structure. But I would call it the second one in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, just there to connect, uh, engage with a bunch of like-minded brothers, uh, be vulnerable, be open, mm-hmm. challenge each other, do some 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 hard stuff like you know, running a ten k on the, the Sunday and mm-hmm. pretty intense breathing section uh, session on the oh, Saturday. Yeah. Um, and and it was funny because the guy the, the the instructors were like, take it easy the next day kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then all all the guys ran. Whether there was a group that ran a five k and then we did a ten k and then there was a couple others that did a twenty k, twenty one k half marathon. Yeah. So yeah, no, it was just uh, good to send it and um, opportunity to deepen the relationships and the the bond that mm-hmm. that um, you know every that you certainly share with a lot of those guys that was my first time experience uh you know getting to really know them on that mm-hmm. level so and even yeah. do something like that uh, yeah yeah like i've never been to any kind of gathering like mm-hmm. that as well so it was uh it was a great first experience so yeah thank you for hosting for yeah. sure it was uh, it was pretty pretty powerful um shed light on areas that like uh, that by doing more of that like i'm going to feel more comfortable like in environments um, like that going forward mm-hmm. next time that you host an event or, or whatever, like mm-hmm. going to like a Joe Dispenza thing. And like, you get, you do that with a group of people oh, yeah. and stuff. So yeah, I think it was, uh, it's good, good practice and, uh, just a great place to be. We covered a lot of ground in my first three days in Toronto. So yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So the high level of, of, uh, what we did was weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, 20 guys, one Airbnb, uh, like Jordan was alluding to, a bunch of vulnerability, a lot of, you know, uh, put, putting yourself through uncomfortable situations. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was an absolutely phenomenal uh, mm-hmm. time, not only for myself, but then overall, just like the event. I was actually, I put out a feedback form to see what everyone was like feeling. And I think I have about just over half of the guys have submitted back. And uh, there's only been one guy what two of the questions were like how likely would you be to recommend like above men in the retreat to other friends Mm -hmm. and then how likely would you be to come back Mm -hmm. and there was only one guy that's put like an eight and a nine i think and everyone else has just been like 10 out of 10 on both Mm -hmm. right so clearly you know it was an amazing event i felt amazing that was a one thing i'm super blessed to do doing this business is like when this stuff comes up it's not like i'm doing it and i you know i gotta like uh punch in punch out type thing like i'm fucking enjoying it just as much as you guys mm-hmm. are right mm-hmm. and uh and so it was awesome and i appreciate you coming to, to support it and uh at the same time just go in for yourself right like clearly there was a lot of growth happening on your end mm-hmm. uh supporting me or not which of course i appreciate and yep. there is there's obviously you benefiting from getting vulnerable getting mm-hmm. uncomfortable in those situations which you know i think it's something that i glance over not only with you but a lot of guys that i'm friends with that's like i think my brain was almost like uh, short wired in the sense of just being vulnerable in front of guys i don't know what it is maybe again maybe that's part of my gifts but um it 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 hardly strikes me and it's something that i'm trying to be more empathetic about to or sympathize with you know individuals like yourself that might that is on your mind that you're like, you know, trying to be conscious of, you know, how you show up and how you act in front of other individuals. Um, But I was actually, one of the things I wanted to to bring up based off of what we were talking about in the breath work, because you obviously brought up that 
hey, it is, uh, I forget the exact words. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but mm-hmm. something along the lines of like, hey, this is difficult to, to open up to everyone and kind of like share about me and, and what I got going on. And I'm just curious, like, what, what kind of like runs through your mind or what was running through your mind? Let's get specific when you were first showing up to that event, like on your way. And then like the first hour or two, like what was kind yeah. of running through your mind? Cause I think this is something that not only you face, but I think a lot of guys face mm-hmm. where there is a lot of internal pressure and, uh, overthinking potentially around like, Oh, you know, whatever the pattern is, but I think, yeah. there's, you know, so what, what was that for you? Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just, uh, worried about saying the, the wrong thing, not being able to articulate my, my, my thoughts. Well, I was like feeling pressure about, cause I knew that you were going to ask a question at dinner. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, cause I remember when you, we, for the, the dinner that I went to with, yeah. with black and blue here, yeah. um, just that one night I wasn't expecting that. It was like one thing you're grateful for. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> And as soon as like you asked it and it was going around the table and then there was like the 12th guy to do it. It was like, I was just, my heart was pounding the whole time. <laughs> um, so, so because I knew that you were, I was like, fuck, like, and just for me, it was a, just a new environment. But what I feel though, is just like, I need to put, I need to like, like what's my backstory? How do I communicate in the best way? So I'm like looked at through like the most ideal lens or that mm-hmm. how I want to be perceived, which could like bleed into like, yes, like I still to a degree for sure care what people think, but in other situations, it actually hasn't shown up like that. Just like when I'm at the gym and I'm recording myself or, um, the willingness to go approach that girl, like, even though that could come across like not the best, I, I don't really care about the outcome there or what someone might be thinking about me, or if that came across the wrong way, how that person reacted. Mm -hmm. But in that situation, surrounded by just some like high like some pretty savage dudes yeah. like i want to be perceived like that too because i so i guess it's just like mm-hmm. putting on putting on a bit of the show um not not that you're performing it's just like i just worried about saying the the wrong thing or like is my answer good enough mm-hmm. kind of thing like because the question was is like what's one thing that you're grateful for yeah but um, that showed up as a challenge hmm. earlier mm-hmm. that you're now grateful yeah, for. The, new, the next question. Uh, which yeah. I actually wanted to take, I think this is a good time to talk about what that was for me. Hmm. Cause I was thinking about my answer. Mm-hmm. Like those, so the whole time it was like, and I was pondering, am I going to say something now? Mm-hmm. Or am I just going to like, hopefully this brushes over. Cause, <laughs> but, but what, before I get into that, actually, one thing I've, I noticed about myself and is that I'm very much an observer and I have talked to my mom about this actually. Mm-hmm. She said when I was a kid, I'd be, when I'd see like crowds of like kids playing and stuff like that, I was always on the outside. I mm-hmm. wouldn't just jump in. And I think there's a lot of truth to that and why I, I'm not so likely to just like kind of jump into a yeah. crowd yet. Um, so I think that is, is present. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think I was just like, uh, just, you know, nervous. It was like, cause I, I'm like, putting pressure on the fact of myself like oh like this is a guy that that cam lives with and like i gotta show up too Mm. it's like if cam's this style like i gotta be this style or whatever Mm. and like i gotta speak that way um and so i was just kind of like going through like hey what's my story going to be Mm -hmm. because i wanted to make sure it was like i it was based on like if i think it was good enough kind of thing and that Mm. that's the problem right it's Mm -hmm. like you're always good enough and it's like you're what still what you have to say is always valuable but in that moment, I wasn't feeling that way. It was mm-hmm. just like, I want to have something that I think is like relevant. And I was going to go down uh, a completely different path. And then I realized when I went to bed that night, I was like, fuck, I had a great answer that I could have just writ. And right. I would, but, but because I was like, my heart was going, yeah. like I wouldn't have been able to communicate it effectively. Mm-hmm. And that's what would prevent me from like doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, in that moment. And so what that was for me is just going Hold through. On, let's reframe the question. Yeah, yeah. The question is, uh, what's something that's been a challenge for you recently Yeah, that you are now grateful for and why? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was the question. Um, and the, the challenge was, it was getting absolutely, uh, just shut down at the board, going for the dunk and getting smacked down from getting fired twice mm. last year. Mm um back to back selling mm-hmm. my car thinking mm-hmm. that it was going to be there long term and then because you got a company vehicle because i got a company vehicle yeah. they gave me a brand new f-150 mm-hmm. 
um, like decked out to the yeah. nines, like car play, big screen, yeah. feeling psyched. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you know, eight feet off the ground driving mm-hmm. this big ass truck and feeling, feel nuts about it. Um, so, so I, that was the, so th- that was like before you and I were going to work together at mm-hmm. the agency, we did that franchising opportunity. So I'm going to c- explain this whole story to, so I give context, but we had the, your story agency kind of fell through. Mm-hmm. Then we rolled that into the franchising opportunity mm-hmm. with the doing the, um, Go yeah, just on, yeah. selling franchises, yeah. which was an absolute nightmare that didn't <laughs> work out for both of us. And then, um, from there I was still, I was just bartending, like mm-hmm. making like nuts money. So I didn't have mm-hmm. to like get that kind of day job or didn't yeah. feel the need to. But at that time I was working out or working till three, 4 AM. Yeah. Just like, the total opposite lifestyle about what we both talk about how we operate yeah. now, mm-hmm. but was living that dialed. Cause I went to the gym, but still having the chicken strips from Wendy's and like stuff like that. And it was just like that classic kind of lifestyle, but didn't drink, but was vaping and stuff. Um, and then that's when I got that job, but it was a fleet management company. So it was like part of their sales team. Um, they were a startup. Me and this other guy got hired at the same time and, realizing that they they actually churned through all these like mm-hmm. other two reps like way before us mm-hmm. found this out after um terrible management long story short um uh within like a month and like getting results to got canned mm-hmm. um same with the other guy yeah um i had just sold my uh I, I, this this car the car i had before um t- because i was getting this 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 new truck mm-hmm. and i was like i don't need to need this uh this car yeah, anymore i'm yeah. just gonna get rid of it mm-hmm. this is in a, in a month get canned i have no no vehicle now hmm. um you're in langley it's not like you're downtown vancouver yeah exactly so back in langley like still have to drive around anywhere like and it was it was an ego hit because i had negotiated a, a pretty high salary there um and got it and then canned and then now i'm driving my brother's car yeah. which is like a 19 like Dude, like just a rinse mobile, <laughs> just a rinse mobile. So it was like an ego check. Yeah. And actually, like it was, it was good for me that to because I, I lost. I was driving a nice car that I couldn't really afford at the time anyway. Mm-hmm. But like there was this attachment that I had to it, mm-hmm. so it was good for me to like have that. So we'll get to like the, the gratefulness part. But okay, canned, and then next up, I get hired with your story agency, mm-hmm. which is what we were gonna do together mm-hmm. before this. Mm-hmm. But then we all stayed friends with the guys at the agency mm-hmm. and then um, got the opportunity there. That only lasted, again, long story short, like maybe two and a half, three months. Um, some miscommunications and stuff like that. But just it was way, way too short lived. Mm-hmm. But even though and then to, to getting fired from there and just didn't pan out in the moment, I'm thinking like, bro, like this is this is like I was going to do this for a while. Like mm-hmm. this is this is a great opportunity, Mm -hmm. you know, great money. Like, so I thought, and like, so on and so forth. And then getting the old rinse bow bins again, (laughs) which is the, the, the term that we coined now rinse bow bins. And then, um, uh, yeah. And then I remember getting back, uh, or like going home that day and it was just like, fuck dude, like this is back to back. It's got the car, the car rinse. And I'm just like, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, in the midst of this, it was like, looking at getting into high ticket sales kind of the whole time mm-hmm. and took like crazy action with it. Um, was just sending pitches to people. Like I was good at writing and like being able to get my foot in the door of places. And then that's when founder West was born and that was Matt's first hire. Mm-hmm. And now we're absolutely crushing. Mm-hmm. But I remember going back to one of the texts that you sent me, like when this was all happening, it was like, bro, I just got fired and you're just like, dude like happy for you like <laughs> kind of looking forward to seeing what's what's next yeah, yeah, yeah. i remember that was like one of the first things that you said um like literally the first text after you said that dude yeah. literally it was the first text, and it was just like just just go listen to some kt which is a, one of our shared mentors kevin yeah. trudeau and that's exactly what he did it went for my walk because at the time i was doing the walks it was like half kind of degenerate lifestyle half not yeah so i was still doing that um but yeah i just went on the walk and just was like you know, hearing Kevin Trudeau talk, it's like when you, when you get a flat tire on your yeah. way somewhere, it's like, good, good. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It probably prevented you from either, you know, a crash totally. or it's like, who knows you're who you're going to so be the fucking mechanic show up, et cetera. Yeah. So it was just that reframe and kind of like just aligning the mindset to be like, no, this is a good thing. And yeah. dude, if I had stayed with 
the the fleet management company or didn't get fired, I would have been thinking that that was like the highest earning income earning potential that was like for me at that time because I had the truck and yeah. uh, like that's you think that's good, but there's there's also this um, crazy amounts of more floor above yeah. you that you can ascend to. Yeah. Um, so there was that and then boom and then the, the the agency too and because it was like friends it was like oh video marketing that sounds cool and then you like attach meaning to like that role and like it gives you kind of like a boost there too um but then like i'm like founder west i'm like literally making like 10x what i would have made <laughs> like it's actually insane yeah um so yeah that is that is something that was tr- super challenging and, and something i'm really grateful for yeah and so imagine that like it would have brought the house down Oh yeah, totally. that. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I was just kidding, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, it, you, you bring up a whole other part of a conversation, which I think we should pin and come back to, because I also think the first, my first question is like, hey, you know, how are you thinking coming into it? And then my next follow up was like, why do you think this is happening? Like, if we were to take this this mindset that you're having coming mm-hmm. into it, in this lens, mm-hmm. and put it out in front of us and start to dissect it, because I think this is a really important thing that actually i forget who who it was but one of the guys brought up comparison yeah and uh that ended up sparking like a really good conversation at dinner totally and uh, i i was like man like i think this is a really big topic that a lot of guys have and i actually feel this idea of comparison links back to where this is stemming from in your own mind right yeah and whether it's like people you you're comparing yourself to like or your answer to how like I'm perceived and then Mm -hmm. you're like, well, what are other people going to think based off of who they are? Yeah. And there's this weird like status game going on that a lot of it isn't helpful. Right. In certain lights. Sure. Playing the status game can be helpful on social media, et cetera. But in a moment like that, like that's just, you know, in a lot of way, unhelpful thinking. So if we were to unpack that and bring this lens as to why you're feeling the way you're feeling, feeling like I need to say the certain things and, and, and show up as a certain version of, Jordan or just a certain person, why do you think this is occurring? Like what, what's yeah. stemming? What is the foundation that this is being built on? Do you think? Uh, when number one childhood, for sure. I had mm. uh, definitely an unlock with my very, very close friend, Tawny. Um, I know that when she'll listen to this, she'll text me about it. Um, and this was the day before that I came to the event. Mm. Uh, s- so with just like with my past with my dad, he basically left when I was like six. Um, and like a lot of the, the memories of childhood, I actually don't have. The only thing I remember from childhood is all bad stuff. Mm. I actually don't remember anything good about my mom and dad's relationship, which is a sign of like when you're a your child and your brain is literally forming and like taking in all this data, it will b- block like. Uh, create blockages yeah. and that's why i don't essentially remember the mm-hmm. good stuff but because of that i think this is and we all know like the way we are now and how we respond to things react to certain things argue whatever is stems from childhood that's mm-hmm. that's like it's a fact and then in this situation with like the comparison i think in in my my situation it's just simply like okay if i wasn't good enough to get that love when i was younger mm-hmm. that means i need to be the best at whatever it is i need to have the best story i need to have the most amount of accolades i need to make the most amount of money or have the most qualified career in order to be deserving of that love i think and that's what's showing up for me in many different forms when it comes to being put um speaking in in front of people who i perceive to be like of a higher Mm -hmm. um uh like cloth Mm -hmm. uh essentially Mm -hmm. and so uh, I think I think it shows up that just my because how you respond to that how stress responds to that certain thing it it, it doesn't it, it's just just the emotion itself mm-hmm. but it's not able to say oh, that motion is because of that thing or mm-hmm. that thing or that thing it just shows up anyways mm-hmm. in whatever fear of not being good enough not worthy of this love or to be accepted to be left behind and that's what I was talking about with you and I on our relationship, which has shown up in other areas too, is like, um, yeah, like just, it's just like, is this good enough? Mm. Like I want it to be perfect kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so that comparison will show up everywhere. Mm. Um, and if, but, but because it's like 
I, th- I think it's because of the childhood thing and mm-hmm. my dad and, and, and cause I wasn't like getting what my, my basic, my basic needs at mm-hmm. that age, I was always fighting for it. Mm-hmm. And so that would show up. It showed up for my story about high school and wanting to attract more women mm. and why I kind of was a bit of a philanderer and mm. would sleep around and mm. was kind of treated it more of a, a little bit of a game mm-hmm. because I wanted to prove to my friends that I, I was the guy to get the girls, mm. you know? And mm-hmm. so that showed up in that way. Mm-hmm. And so it shows up for, in that speech, mm-hmm. it shows up everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I, and, and how I've looked at, yeah. And the comparison for me is like, that's where it comes from. Um, so, so what do you think, what do you think would happen? Like if you didn't show up at your best from like a subjective standpoint? Yeah. That, that I would, that I, that it would be the fear of being like left behind. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, like I, he's just going to go move on to, to someone else. And like, and then I'll, I'll just be like lonely by myself mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, so yeah, just not, not good enough. Won't be able to like get those opportunities that I want mm-hmm. because like, I'm not good enough. I don't, mm-hmm. I didn't have the, the best way to explain that or like, um, just not like looked at like, like highly or like a, like an inspiration or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's what would happen. Mm-hmm. That's what I, but even You're though perceiving, e- perceiving like, mm-hmm. it's not like that, that would happen, but yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah well, that, that's an important thing right there is I think, I, and again, this comes up in so many different areas, but this is why things like meditation and more importantly, mindfulness and metacognition really play a role in reshaping mm-hmm. our past. Because what you said, there's a lot of truth to that in the sense of yes, how our childhood plays out affects how we show up today, especially as, early adults mm-hmm. in our 20s and our 30s and just really creating a, a real identity for ourselves that we're going to like bring into this the world in a large way um but i think there's also the the point of like okay let's look at that and we can actually dissect it and reprogram what we don't totally like right yeah and so this is where using things like metacognition being mindful or or, or having awareness of our actual thoughts and, and thinking about our thoughts and our algorithms that we're running and the better we can be at the at becoming aware of our thoughts and then mm-hmm. reprogramming them, the easier it is to go into these situations where in the past version of us, that algorithm would have ran where it's like, oh, I need to show up as the best. I need to say this certain thing that is sometimes going to be like disingenuous to who we currently are. Yeah. And then the more often we do that, the, the more likely we can actually show up as our most genuine self, the self that really yeah. everyone's looking for of each other. Like everyone would rather the real Jordan versus the manufactured Jordan totally. that says X and Y because he thinks yeah. this is what's going to, you know, rally up the crowd. Yeah. Or, I think have the crowd think further, right? Yeah. What, one thing I want, I want to say here too, like it's, it's tr- when I'm still like, I'm trying to figure out, I, I, it always will enter my brain sometimes is like what it, that, so, so the heartbeat rises, you, you, you get a little flushed in the face mm-hmm like whatever those, the, the physiological, um, shows up. Yep. Right. So I know based on, uh, videos that I've saved and stuff, when you do feel nervous talking to a crowd or whatever, it's just breathing slowly, taking slow mm-hmm. five to 10 mm-hmm. second inhale and breathing out slowly, even doing that still feel it. But after we did the breath work, I was able to unpack that mm-hmm. and I felt fine. Mm-hmm. But like in, I think, I think like, Cause I communicating just like what we just, that whole like rift on how, why I think mm-hmm. that shows up was very calm and collected, but doing that, explaining that in a crowd, when you feel that fear and that, and that, mm-hmm. that lights up and your heart's beating mm-hmm. so fast, mm-hmm. then I'm like, Oh fuck. Like I'm going on this tangent. I'm saying this, I'm saying that it doesn't even make sense. It's just a messy plate. Yeah. So that's, that's where I struggle so hard when it comes to, Cause I, I, I'm a great, I know I'm, I don't say this to like self tote myself, but like, I, I know I can communicate well mm-hmm. when, when I'm calm and I'm centered, but like mm-hmm. when that lights up and even when you're trying to manage it, I've, I, I'd rather refrain mm-hmm. because of like, 
if I if I can't just ex- explain this right and I want it and and it's very important that I I say it right, mm-hmm. I'd rather kind of wait and conserve mm-hmm. that information until maybe I get more a bit more comfortable with that crowd and then I can like maybe share it later. But I also know that's like that's not always gonna maybe only have that one opportunity to mm-hmm. impact a crowd, right? Totally. So so I think in saying that, there's like I it's almost like uh because this kept coming up is like there's work to be done but like there is you know try, trying to figure out you know how you can be yeah better at approaching that crowd right yeah like is it is it better to refrain yeah and wait and not put the rep in yeah or is it better no, for to sure. actually just put the rep in maybe not show up exactly how you envisioned it or that like yeah know, negative feedback loop wanted you to show up but you got the rep in and then later on you're like, Oh, you know, I'm actually getting better at this because of yeah. I'm showing up. Yeah. Right? Like what's, what's really, cause it, it's almost saying like, Hey, once the conditions are perfect, then I'm going to act. Yeah. I know. You know, and that's almost like a, a, a breeding ground for it to showing up in other areas of our life. Mm-hmm. Right. And I know mm-hmm. just having insight on how you're going about the personal branding thing, that's obviously something that you've also challenged with in a different light of like, Hey, once the conditions are right, then, yeah. I'm going to start posting or then, you know, and only once you've like really pushed yourself to say, fuck it, I'm just going to post the thing. Yeah. It might not be the best, but it's like, I'm, it's like, oh shit, you're getting a rep in now. All yeah, of a sudden yeah. you learned a little bit, you figured out something about yourself. Yeah. So it's like getting really clear for yourself is like, is this actually the best path or is it just saying, Hey, I hear what you're saying mind, but I'm going to go the uncomfortable path. I'm going to actually just show up regardless of how I'm mm-hmm. feeling here. Right. And I think there's two ways to approach it. There's, the um, path of thinking about it and doing the breath, the breathing and whatnot. I shouldn't say think about it. I was going to use that in another term, doing the breath work and calming your nervous system. Like you said, like that's a path. I think the other path is back to this metacognition thing that in the moment, because there's a good book called designing the mind. And he all, he talks about like uh, psyche, psyche architecture, psychitecture, uh, this idea of like, you can construct the mind again, using metacognition, almost like program, deprogram, and like become aware of biases. So this is kind of like a bias, right? Uh, and you can see that and then you can do counter biasing or debiasing where it's like you understand that there's a bias. So it's the, the example in your shoes, I'm at the dinner and then I know when I'm in a crowd, I want to show up with perfection. And so if I don't feel like I can show up with perfection, I'm actually going to step back. So if you know that about yourself and you're aware of that exact thing in the moment, you could mm-hmm. do the breath work, which could, you know, work in hand in hand. Or you can be like, I know I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to feel this way right now with my current programming. I'm actually going to counter bias this and say, it's actually okay not to show up as perfect, or it's actually okay to put the rep in and I can get away with it. And people aren't going to uh, mm-hmm. think of me as like, oh, this guy's a nobody and I'm never going to listen to yeah. him again. Right. And almost like putting the rocks on the other side of the scale to balance it out. Yeah. Cause now all of a sudden you feel yeah. more in control of acting. But if there's no rocks on this side of like the logical, it's going to feel like this. And you're like, no, 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 right. I can't act. And so it's the idea of yeah. de-biasing or counter-biasing things that you know are present in your mind right now. Mm-hmm. The best solution is just eliminate them. Yeah, I was but, gonna, I was going to continue on that yeah. point. I was going to take that a layer deeper. Yeah, like that's um, obviously the best solution. Yeah. But of yeah. course, in that situation. Because it's a, that what you're saying is, and I, I think that's valuable for sure mm-hmm. in the moment because it's a tactic. It's like, hey, what are the tools that you can use yeah. that are at your disposal right now that – are going to be able to give you the, that effect to be able to handle this situation the way you yeah. want. Yeah. To, and then what you're saying, cause I was just going to jump in is like to take that a layer deeper, which is possible. And so in, in anything of what I said here, this is by no means like victim at all mm-hmm. um, to go lay, layer deeper. It's like that. Uh, yeah. What if you can just like, and you can to be able to feel those emotions to like, you can do that f- with a facilitator. I do th- I would like to like entertain like maybe another form of like some uh, therapy or something like that. I think it could potentially be valuable. I don't know. But um, just to go back to that place mm-hmm. of like and do that, do a little bit of some of those sessions can be like breath work is, is to be able to feel that breath work can take you there um, to be able to feel that and like to feel the, the emotions, even though it's really hard and then you release them. Um, so, so that would be like the going layer deeper and like yeah. now it just doesn't even show up anymore. So you don't need to use those. Totally. 
Yeah, and and obviously that's like the longer term solution, right? Like that's best case scenario. Uh, it's like you know instead of resisting the cookies in the cupboard, just fucking throw them out in the first place or don't buy them, right? But that's easier said than done than removing you know deep deep set uh, thought patterns that have been there for a while, right? So it's like until those are eliminated, how can you navigate those in scenarios where it's like, hey, I've now become aware of this, which you're clearly aware this is going on, but this is where things like mindfulness and metacognition come in play and like self-awareness is the more self-awareness you can have, the more effective you are to uh, counter countering those biases in the moment. Because it's one thing to sit down in a calm situation like this and unpack it, it's another thing to be in the heat of the moment and have the self-awareness that that's occurring yeah. and then be like, okay, here's this thing going on and I'm going to counter bias it and then act in accordance to the actual logical path because in the outside of that, I've understood, okay, this is a bias. Yeah. This is how I counteract it. Yeah. And then when it happens, you actually run the counter bias. And you're like, no, we're actually good. We can act now. Yeah. Right. And then, and then down the road, of course, eliminate it, yada, yada. But, yeah. um, yeah, I was. I, I wanted to really ask about that because I find that so so fascinating. Yeah, because 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 y- you were you wouldn't be, <laughs> um, like a a uh, we'd love for you to come to this speaking engagement tomorrow and speak to this group of like yeah. thirty guys about X Y Z thing. It's tomorrow. Can you make it? Yeah. Fuck yeah, mm-hmm. you're gonna go right because yeah, totally. it's an opportunity. And yeah, you you wouldn't have had time to do the the work. Yeah, <laughs> the deeper work. That, so so to, to design the mind, metacognition, use the tools at your disposal. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent, and I think this goes to a more macro point of again progress over perfection, mm. right? Like just in anything in life, no one's perfect. Mm-hmm. But and not to not to like make that easier for you, be like, hey, you're, no one's perfect, so you don't have to be perfect. But more in the sense of that's the journey of life is just going at whatever you're going at, knowing you're gonna make mistakes. Yeah. And using those data points or using those mistakes as data points instead of like these downfalls. Right. And I think actually a good book that I potentially would recommend for you to read and anyone that feels this way that they're like the, the hands they're dealt is maybe a little bit more sticky and they, they can't get rid of certain things mm-hmm. is um, Mindset by Carol Dweck. And it's this idea of like static, static mindset and like growth mindset mm-hmm. and the idea that anything pretty much like anything to do with our mind we can completely reprogram it and again that's where designing the mind like really goes into the the depths of it but it's a concept of like certain people just believe like hey this is my programming and i'm stuck with this and if i can't perform with this i'm a failure it's like oh wait i actually don't like this one thing in here so i'm actually gonna like tweak it because i know i can change it i have a growth mindset i know it's i know it's dynamic totally right and it's it's watching your language on how we talk about our current situation and in um limitation mm. and not having them as absolutes like mm-hmm. using the mm-hmm. language around hey uh i am this way like i am bad at math yeah that's a very static and yep. and uh you know rigid statement Restricted. Yep. but sure. we could go one step further and be like hey dude right now i'm pretty bad at math but yeah. like it's something that i'm yeah. working on yeah, exactly yep completely different and it, it gives you a pathway forward gives you hope Mm-hmm. that that current status or that current skill set is yeah. malleable yeah right and, and and again i've been caught in it and now i'm i'm very mindful of how i talk yeah and uh it's something that i would encourage everyone listening is be super first of all again you got to have the ability to be self-aware this is where meditation comes in mindfulness practices metacognition but once you do now you can start to watch yourself as you're talking oh like i'm, I'm jumping back in that static mm-hmm. mindset i'm jumping mm-hmm. in like I'm telling myself, I'm reaffirming that I can't change this. No, no, that's not true. Yeah. You can change anything, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's 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 what I want to wrap up there on around that. And then jumping back into the piece of the or not this piece, but like the story you're talking about around hey, challenge, fired twice, like really sat on my ass. Oh shit, what am I gonna do? Uh, and then everything else is actually like blossoming. Mm. Like, dude. I can a resonate with that in so many lights, but then B I wanted to just like spotlight that for a sec, because like you said, you're in the position now where you're flourishing, right? You're making more money than you ever have. Mm-hmm. Your skill sets going crazy. You're in a, a, a thriving business. And that was all off the back of back to back else, you know? Yeah, literally. And so 
the the point I just wanted to highlight here was, gents, you have to go through hardship to yeah. have the seeds of success start to blossom, right? Like those can't be planted without hardships. Like one way or yeah. another, it's pr- it's not proven, but it's time and time again illustrated across all of the greats that have made it. Mm-hmm. That it's like bad thing, bad thing, bad yeah. thing, bad thing, and then the good thing, right? And the reason I bring this up is don't look at all those bad things as bad things, quote unquote, right? We're using the words good and bad, but really when you get objective with it, it's just a thing that's occurring and you can see it as good or bad. And this is where this idea that I got from Brian Johnson is ohms. Obstacles make me stronger is a great Mm. thing. It's just like, this is happening Mm. for me, not to me. And I can actually extract this or extract some sort of like strength from this if I overcome it. Yeah. Right. And I think this is such a valuable thing. Cause now I'm just, I've convinced myself it's a core belief that nothing that comes into my life is going against me. And if I embrace it wholeheartedly and love everything that comes into my, my mm-hmm. path, I can become better as a result of it. It doesn't matter yeah. what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a really powerful place to be because now all of a sudden you're like, bring it on. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck's yeah. next, dude? Like, I don't yeah. give a fuck what comes in. Right. And even like my deepest fears of like majorly breaking an arm or like losing a limb, like I used to have major fears of that. And now this wow. thought pattern mm-hmm. has like completely helped me. It's like, even if that happened, I'm like, fuck, that would suck. And I would be able to figure it out. I don't Bro, know what would happen yeah. because of it, but who knows? I can make it my victory. I can, I can change that and make it part of my story that it's like all of a sudden I'm triumphing through this challenge that God's presented mm-hmm. to me. Right. So I think that's a super powerful thing. And the more yeah. reps you go through of like bad thing, bad thing, yeah. and good, bad thing, totally. bad thing, bad thing, good. You, you all of a sudden it yeah. becomes a part of you and you start seeing life in a way more positive light. hundred percent. One thing I pulled from that too, is that this is because we talk about masculinity here a lot too. That, that trait right there being a, you're basically being a solutions pro- provider oh, man. for women, but also for yourself, which and also now you're establishing self-trust. So there's actually two things there. Number one, by operating that way, you you're you're doing the you're you're doing the thing that you said you were gonna do, which instills self trust. Yeah. And you relate that to a partner. That's one of her core needs and what she needs to feel is trust, mm. as well as um, the, uh, trust me. It sounds like it's going down a different route, <laughs> but I just wanted to the, see the the similarities there and the, the trust thing, but also, um, uh, oh, just lost my train of thought. There on it the, is. No, no. It, it, it'll Self come. Trust, women, masculinity. Tru- no, no, trust. And then it was. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I'm getting three, the, reps in, just, the reps in on a podcast. Yeah. Uh, it was just, it was, it was so good that I felt, but and now I'm like forgetting the second pillar to that. Yeah. Um, well, you know what's funny is you just threw your, your own self off by like, you were like watching yourself talk about this thing. Right. And then you had to express to the audience that it's like, oh, this is going off track. And then you express right. that, and as soon as you try to go back to your thought, you're gone. Right. I just watched that <laughs> unfold, which was super interesting. But you know, uh, this comes back to what we were just talking about of like, uh, there was almost a bit of you that came back up that's like, oh, I yeah. need to, I need to tell the audience that like I'm actually, I'm actually talking right. coherently. Could, but if yeah, you had yeah, trust yeah. in yourself, like complete trust, right. you would have just went on, yeah. and you would have led them to the the end goal. But you're like, oh shit, you know. And then you had to bridge that by like saying hey guys like th- i'm not talking was, nonsense yeah it's almost a it, uh, the the way i how because i was actually going to add on to that as like a tactic to like how to if you if you are feeling nervous as one of the the tactics like to be in a charismatic way mm-hmm. is how it would be is to almost call it the elephant in the room and it mm. because when you call it the elephant in the room it kind of like can can get a laugh mm-hmm. and just depressurize which i think is actually could be valuable mm-hmm. um because it, it's something that i do in sales um when you and the example would be uh um like hey like a salesperson yeah like hey i, I listen I, I know my other side of the screen and you know this, i'm selling you kind of thing or whatever however yeah. you want to say that is an example of that but it would be like fuck i'm, I'm imagining all you guys in your underwear right now so i'm just yeah. gonna let this rip like that yeah. would be mm-hmm. like kind of so so in me saying that in in that moment of like just veering off track and mm-hmm. trying to bring it back full circle. I was thinking that like saying that would be um, uh, a way to like, yeah, I guess be humorous, but 
in this maybe in that light it, it actually wouldn't be that effective it'd be probably better, better to just not say that and just mm. let your mind work for a second mm. and let it come back to mm-hmm. a thought mm-hmm. yeah yeah i i think that so you're saying what you were just saying was um what you were trying to do with telling the audience that this is gonna yeah come back around yeah uh, yeah I feel like that was that, those are actually like two different things. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like that's that's what I'm trying to say. It's yeah. like maybe it's actually a bit different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's good awareness on your part to bring that to me because I even just now lo- logging that that because no one's ever like I think said that yeah. uh, to me as well. So that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting to watch yourself say certain things or even think certain things out of justification for your actions. Mm. And then if you go one step deeper, it's like who you justifying them to. Right. In reality, you're not even justifying to them. You're justifying them to yourself in relation to them. Hmm. Does that make sense? Justifying them to yourself in relation to them. So like, because this crowd, you're, you're pitch, you're projecting that this crowd is a certain group of people. Right. And then you're like, okay, I need to operate a certain way. And as soon as I'm like out of alignment or I feel that uh, I'm veering off track in this case relative Mm. to what this crowd is expecting from me Mm. or in the conversation, we were certain we were talking about one thing and then you started to take it off to another track. So you're like, Oh, they're expecting this. Right. And so you're projecting that they're expecting this. Mm. And then because you went off, you're like, Oh wait, they're expecting this. So let me actually like bridge the gap back by explicitly saying my justification for going off track. Right. And then you're just like, hey, by the way, this is going to come back full circle. But it's like you were only saying that because you thought it was supposed to go this way. But mm-hmm. if you remove that expectation right. that they were expecting right, you right, right, right. to saying. go this way, yeah, yeah. then it would have just flowed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, because you projected that they were expecting what you realized yeah. we're just so, fucking so, two dudes talking in a room right yeah, now. Yeah. You're, you're putting a projection on this audience that the audience doesn't even exist in the begin with. Right. So then it's you justifying yourself in relation to them, which is who's them. But then you caused you, but then I've caused them now to do that yeah. loop with me. Yeah. And they, they were, would have were on the straight line totally. before it the whole time. Totally. So I did it to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a good one. You know? Yeah. 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 Totally. But then that happens like more often than I think people realize. Right. Like, uh, like any, any, any time. The, like expectations starts to di- uh, uh, drift from reality in the mind. Either a thought pops up that is like, oh, we're not supposed to be doing this. Right. Like an example of this would be um, you go and like break a rule at like an establishment or something. And then you have to go and justify it to them. You're like in the mm. back of your mind, you're like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. You know, like for, for example, uh, when in the parking garage at a condo, right? We gotta we gotta wait for the garage goes down. But if you start driving and you like or consciously know you're breaking the rule, your mind's all of a sudden justifying like, hey, dude, you shouldn't be doing this, you know. But then if someone were to come and stop you, like, hey, you're supposed to stop, you would have tried to justify to them that it's like my actions were uh, worth it. Or like, oh, like I'm I'm in a hurry, you know. And then you would be like, oh, I I, I need to do that, right? But mm-hmm. we justified it because the expectation and versus reality is like you know separate. In that case, it's more black or white because it's like, yes, this is the rule. But in the conversation, there's no right or wrong. Yeah. Uh, but anytime there is, it's the, the expectation becomes too distant from the reality. Mm. And all of a sudden, the mind starts like looping of, wait, mm. it's not how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this all comes back to, which I think, man, the more I talk uh, about this, the more I just realize how important it is, is metacognition and becoming mindful of your thought patterns like the more self-awareness you can have like if this is thought this is you the more you're because this is how everyone is this is thought and this is you we're like so closely tied but the the better you get at widening that gap between who you are and what your thoughts are and actually the first step is just to say we're not the same we're it might be very tight Mm. but everyone's like it's one and the same Mm even just going like this, Hey, I might be very associated with my thoughts, but I am not my thoughts. Yeah, yeah totally. That's step one. Yeah. And then widening that gap between thought and yourself and being able to actually like look at it from a further and further distance. Like, why do we say, Hey, 30,000 foot view? Why do we start with that? Cause it's the easy picture to uh, digest. And then you go into the forest. Hmm. So it's like, if you can be really detached and see things from a, a, a high level, it's really easy to see what that thought's actually doing. Cause yeah. the, the higher you're up, you are, 
the, the easier it is to see how that thought connects with everything else. But if you're only a little bit away, you're like, oh, I see that thought, but I don't know what that means. I don't know how it correlates to everything else. And it's just, man, like, I think that the book here for everybody to, to read and myself, I need to go back and, and, uh, reread it is, uh, Michael Singer on tethered soul. Cause that, that's what, what he talks, talks about, about that? heavily. Okay. It's about, uh, yeah. Viewing yourself from a 30,000 view and that mm. you're, you're, you're not your thoughts. Like you're, you're a, an observer of your experience and there's actually like two selves. Mm. Essentially you have, um, the ego self and then, um, like who you are yeah. kind of thing. And, um, yeah, creating a, a breakwater. And that's what me- med- meditation does. Like when you're really totally. active, it, is there's like a, 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 a break breakwater, like a, a calm yeah. between stimulus and response. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, to, to add on to your point as reminders to, to myself, to, you know, whoever is listening to this as well, just to, uh, keep, um, exercising that, um, that tool, yeah. your brain. Yeah, I'll even go one step further. The big four in my eyes, uh, the big the big four of mindfulness is meditation. And I think that's hands down the best one. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of scientists would agree. Then uh, gratitude. I think gratitude is actually one because what does gratitude get us to do? Yeah. Reflect. Yeah. Right? Take a moment and, and, and look at what we were we've come from. So uh, meditation, gratitude, mm-hmm. journaling. I think a journaling, journaling is actually a super underrated one. Yeah. Because again, what does it force you? You take your thoughts and you have to put it in some coherent manner. Yeah. And then the last one is breath work, like yeah. we talked about. I think breath work's an amazing one because it calms us and creates that still mm-hmm. water, mm-hmm. right? So if you can do even one of those on a regular basis, yeah. I- ideally all four. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. The no. amount of self awareness and metacognition and mindfulness you can build up, that gap. Ugh. Yeah. It, I would say these four habits are at the core of what has allowed me to, to evolve myself as quickly as I have. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I I'm two out of the four right now. And that's actually, thanks for bringing that up again, because one thing that I just learned or kind of just, it just reignited was like, I've journaled in the past before, but it mm-hmm. hasn't been a consistent thing. And, uh, f- I've heard it too many times now <laughs> from whether it's you or just anybody who I find valuable and like listen to a lot is yeah. they always fucking journal. They, they journal like, like mad men. Um, totally. They're always writing stuff down and um, it's just something I need to, to, to s- just start integrating and build a habit of, of oh, like man. with no different. Cause yeah, I'm doing, doing the, bre- doing the breath work, doing the meditation. And that's all, that's all good stuff. But there, there, is, there are next levels that um, it w- would help me. I bet you it actually probably would improve my sleep if I actually journaled before bed too. Cause it's like you're you're just emptying your mind before you you go to bed you're creating space for your brain to actually get into that um that uh theta or mm-hmm. alpha brain wave mm-hmm. state whatever you what is it, the correct term there um so yeah yeah i agree man and, and a few things off that is one uh timely oh. our last call our last coaching call that i had with above men mm-hmm. i think there were six or seven guys on there at some point almost every single guy brought up that journaling just naturally journaling has been like affecting him lately. And it's been, wow. a, it's been like a, a habit that they've been implementing. Like one of the guys was just like, dude, I've gained the most clarity I've had wow. in my life since I've started journaling at the end of the night. Dude, that I love to hear that again. Now it's like, we call that like the, the, the 30th person six who, are, who I don't know you're talking about right. that are now telling me to journal, yeah. but like, act like I'd, Hearing that stuff, that just like, just raised my urgency to add to cart on Amazon <laughs> after this. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not even kidding because, because yeah, yeah. as I'm thinking about why that that would give clarity, it's like you're thinking so, dude. I forget, it's like hundreds of thousands of thought enter your uh, yeah, probably some crazy. Bra- brain or, yeah. like during a day, and you're gonna have good ones, you're gonna have maybe some negative ones, maybe some neutral ones, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you can get in the habit of every single day just b- writing down what those thoughts were and how you were thinking about one thing or one thought that you held on to that just and then carried with you through the day then taking the five or ten minutes to unpack that mm-hmm. dude that's that's like that's insane so so it's actually now m- making me feel insane that i haven't been journaling <laughs> yeah. because if you're thinking that many thoughts yeah. and you're you're this type of person now you're more mature you're more dialed you're yeah. more this but 
there's also this area that you want to improve on. You want to optimize that thing. Then you should be logging it mm-hmm. because now it's going to just be more solidified and imprinted into your brain that you're actually going to do something about yep. it versus having this cool thought or this good thought and then not jotting it down and mm-hmm. potentially forgetting it. Or uh, maybe it shows up in a different manner, but you had a better insight as to what that thought was three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So you should have wrote it down then and then you would have reflected on it the next night when you go to bed and continue mm-hmm. to unpack it or mm-hmm. gain clarity around whatever thing that is. So, yep. wow, that's nuts. Fucking journal boys. I'm yeah. getting my own right now after yeah. this. Yeah, and, and a few things on that. One, uh, doesn't have to be pages every night, right? I think that's the other thing yeah. that guys get caught up on. And right, right, they right. I'd, get I'd see that. Really eager when you first start. And again, I used to be like this when I was younger. It was an all or nothing mentality. Oh, I'm going to start journaling. Okay. You take the first night and you're all pumped up. So you write like fucking five pages out and it takes you an hour. And it was like, it felt worth it because it was novel. And then the next night you only do 45 minutes and then 30 minutes. And then you're just like, dude, and then the next night you're like, ah, fuck, I don't want to sit here for 30 minutes and journal da da da. Right. Dude, it doesn't, it, first of all, there's some nights that I'm just like, "Ah, I don't actually have anything that I really want to like map out. Great. Right. But at least I thought about, is there anything that I want to reflect on? And then there's other times where it's like, yeah, it is like a page long, two pages long where I want to write it out, but it's not an all or nothing thing. It's just taking the time to just, Hey, is there anything that I want to dump out? Is there any Mm -hmm. open loops that I want to close right now or reflect on Mm -hmm. and put into Mm -hmm. my journal? Yeah. And then the second thing is it doesn't always have to be, uh, uh, physical as well. I use for the most part, actually a digital version inside yeah. above OS where it's just, I have a little slot where it's like, Hey, what happened today? Is there anything you want to reflect on? And then sometimes I'll crack out the, the, the physical journal, get pen and paper and rip it. So it's not an all or nothing thing, but it's just showing up each day and giving yourself the space to reflect on and think about what's going on in your world right now, instead of keeping it all bogged up here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask when, uh, when it comes to like the grateful portion, let's say that you were using a physical journal yeah. that um, is something I would lead more towards. Cause I, I think there's a, maybe just how I perceive there's just more power and like actually they're writing, totally writing is, it down. That's a good point. Um, so if you are doing that, let's say that you're following like the prompts, like you're doing the five minute journal mm-hmm. and it's like three things you're grateful for. What if, what would you like you say, And because I remember I have felt like this before is like, fuck, what, what else am I grateful for based on like, I, I'm grateful for that. I can move my body the way I can Mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. But like just without, is it repetitive? You know, like it's almost like you're trying to find new things to to be grateful for that. I I remember thinking one time Yeah. and like maybe, and if you're like writing the same thing that, and you just keep coming back to a few things, I'm like, Hey, like, fuck, like I feel like I've, exhausted like things that i could be grateful for i'm i'm on day 25 as an example so like in that moment i i I can't see thinking about this or or thinking about just for the sake of it being novel oh i've never written this one before yeah like am i gonna write this down you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying is this Mm -hmm. yeah yeah have you ever dealt did you ever have you ever dealt with that yeah i think early on but the one thing i think shifted that was just recognizing that life is a game of recommitments Mm. and there's there's never gonna always be something new and novel and i don't even think that's the right way to look at it like hey we need to be grateful i think it's literally just going to the nth degree and just being like dude you could you could genuinely have gratitude towards your healthy body every single day and it it's not like anyone's like, oh, you know, this guy's stale, bro. Like, he's fucking saying he's grateful <laughs> for his body every day. Like, what a loser. You know, like, there's none of that that that, yeah. that should go on. It's like, dude, if you're grateful to have a moving body every single day, fantastic. And if one day you're like, oh, you know what? I'm actually more grateful that I have running hot water, clean water to drink that day. Mm-hmm. Great. Right? But I don't think there's a, a need to actually have anything new and novel. And if there's certain things that, that happen that day, like a challenge, like, hey, super grateful that I just got challenged today by so-and-so at at work or super grateful that, you know, I actually got cut off in traffic and it made me, it made me think about how much I'm not being present right now, whatever it is. Like you can get creative with things, but at the same time, there's always the basics of like grateful that I have a body, 
grateful that I'm fucking alive, man. Like that's never going to go away until the day you die. Right. And who knows, maybe you can be grateful afterwards. Um, you can always be grateful for that. And I just, I just think it's a lack of actual gratitude towards the things because there's like this, what comes to mind when you say, Oh, I'm looking for something new and novel is you're saying you're grateful for the thing, but you not might not be like fully internalizing yeah. like how much that actually is a blessing to have the thing, mm -hmm. right? Like you could say, Oh, I'm grateful for my body. Yeah. Oh, I'm grateful for running water. But if you really think about it, you know, one of the ones that, that I come back to frequently is anytime I go to eat a nice grass fed, grass finished steak hmm. and I'm sitting there and I'm just thinking about all the work that I had to go into this steak showing up on my plate right now. Mm. Mm. You know, the cow had to be born, right? The cow had to go and live and like graze around on the grass and grow and whatever. Someone had to take care of the cow. Someone had to buy the cow. Someone right. had to nurture the cow. All this stuff. And then someone had to kill the cow. That's, someone mm. had to transport all the meat, cut the meat, package it, build a website for me to find out about their business, for me to fucking get it delivered to my house. Someone had to drive the meat from the, the butcher shop to my doorstep. Dude, all yes, of those bro. steps. It's just like, holy fuck, dude. Like, thank yeah. you to all of those people, hmm. you know? And uh, it's going to that nth degree. That's why I brought that example up because it, it really illustrates like all of the moving pieces that really go into it. And it's like, holy yeah. shit. So same thing with your body, yeah. right? It's just like, was, hey, I'm grateful for my body. Great. But it's yeah. like, look at your body, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Going deep on it. It's like, yeah, holy totally. fuck, like just doing this, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, how can I move yeah. this? Yeah. Um, I, you spent this many hours in the gym. You've done this many curls or presses or. Sure. Yeah. It's like, yeah, if like, you look you at your physique like right that. now, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just like, dude, I'm so grateful that I've showed up for myself two, time and time again in the gym. Yeah. That's a great example. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that, that, that framework in, of taking it to the nth degree because that was my next question is because if, if you're taking the time to be grateful um, and you're, you're someone that, that is, cult, is someone that's working towards and continues to cultivate an abundance mindset because I think most people, including us, we know that we are energetic beings and mm -hmm. we uh, attract uh, the things that we things get based on how we're, we're – operating in alignment with that vibrational frequency yeah. right so if gratitude is the highest state of receivership mm -hmm. and like getting what you want and being and acting like uh, as if you already have that thing then uh how do you how do you embody those emotions of the thing that you want um mm -hmm. of like the frequencies it, yeah in in the future right and so i have struggled with that before but i think that was a really really good take on it because you're taking it to the nth degree and you and the it's not just be like, okay, like I'm, I'm grateful for this computer I got. It's like yeah. thinking about what it's going to do for you. Like the guys who fucking built it, um, what computers used to be like and that they don't have totally. the same there opportunity now. Like, there and just go. take yeah. and, and take it down all paths. Yep. It can go down because then it's like, Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Fuck. I didn't even think about that before. Like, and I got this insane piece of tech <laughs> in front of me that allow me to make all this money would it, and yeah like da -da -da. like exactly exactly and so yeah that's that's a that's actually kind of an unlock for me when i think about when you're meditating on something too um uh when you're med meditating on something that you want and you're like you're uh, carrying that and you you paint that vision mm -hmm. of like kind of that safe place or that place that you want to be and you, you're like for me like i'm on a hammock somewhere and i got the silhouette of a girl that i want and like my ideal my 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 girl basically attributes and stuff like that from the uh, master vision um and then but then you could like you would think about you know the times that you were sad that you got burned that it didn't work out and then that you're she's saying stuff to you that's words of acceptance and just pure love and like you're carrying that ideal future forward too yeah you can really take that far totally yeah totally so anyways this is the mindful four and uh i think those are i think those are just super powerful and i think all guys should embody at least at least one of those every day if not all four work up to it Right. So you, for you, you said you're meditating and you're doing breath work right now. Yeah. And then gratitude and journaling is yeah. stuff that isn't as present. No, not, no, it hasn't, hasn't been, uh, at all. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, no.
Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, to, to hone in on, on gratitude for, for another minute is I genuinely think that's where a lot of people's suffering comes from. Hmm. Like, you know, you could be crushing, right? But again, expectation of reality, you think you should be somewhere else. Yeah. And then you're you're completely missing the mark on everything you got going on right now. Mm-hmm. And then you're just in this state of suffering, which mm-hmm. there's a good equation to, to clear up what suffering is. Suffering equals pain times resistance, right? Mm. And so if you're resisting the idea that, hey, I'm not actually in this current situation, it might be painful that it's like, hey, I really wish I was making 100000 a year and I really wish I wasn't in this apartment and I was actually down in Columbia instead, right? But you were – so that, that you might have pain from that. Uh, but then if you were not resistant to it, it's just like, hey, I want that and that's painful because I don't have it. But I'm completely accepting of what I do have. And this is where you can flip it and go to the gratitude side. It's just like, and I want to be there. And I'm actually loving my life right now. Just closed 20K this month with an amazing team. I get access to, and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, wait. Yeah. I actually have an amazing life. Mm-hmm. And I don't have the, 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 the same mm-hmm. kind of suffering to like, or the same kind of urgency to go down to this place because I'm going to get there and I have confidence in that. But at the same time, like, I have yeah. really good stuff. Yeah, right wake now. up and smell the roses. Totally, dude. <laughs> yeah, totally. Because because what Fuck. gratitude really unlocks is it's the ability to enjoy every moment. Yeah, and yeah. want to be present. Where a lot of entrepreneurs and especially high performers, people that are like in their mind a lot, they constantly think again. Classic grass is greener on the other side type thing, where it's like when I have X, then I'll be happy. When I have X, yep. then I'll be satisfied. When yep. I have X, I can do Y. Yeah. And it's just like, bro, if you think that, who's to say when you get to that X thing, there's not going to be another statement that says when I get to Z now, I'll be happy. It's like that, that, that thought pattern isn't exclusive to this current situation. It's your whole life. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think gratitude unlocks that it breaks that paradigm. It breaks that, that, that thought pattern. It's like, no, no, no. I can actually enjoy what I have right now. Yeah. And want more and have confidence that I'm going to have a better future. Yeah. Right. And I think there was this. Honestly, I think it's 99% bullshit. And I'll tell you the 1% where I think there's some validity in it. This concept that, oh, I don't want to lose that anxiety, that edge, that, that, you know, that, that underlying stress that's pushing me, right? You know, a lot of guys, especially entrepreneurs, they talk about, oh, fuck meditating because it's going to make me mellow. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make me lose my uh, tenacity, my intensity to go after it, you know? Hmm. And uh, guys like Grant Cardone, literally, there's clips of him oh, really? saying never actually, saying this yeah. to say like, dude, I don't want to fucking lose my anxiety. Like, mm. you know, let me let me take a little bit of the edge off, but I need more. it, right? Like, I need this yeah. to move. And I think that's just a the and I literally the ti- I got this from the title of one of my um, uh, modules inside of Above Men, which is the broken model of operating. It's mm. like we think we need to be in this place of lack in order to have the ambition and drive to go after the future. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have this lack, then we're going to feel like, oh, we don't have the drive, we don't have the urgency, et cetera. And uh, I think there's a few things getting built up here. One is this this concept that, like, we need to be at a certain place at a certain time. So it's like, oh, if we don't have urgency to move, then it's like, you know, we're going to fail, et cetera. And again, to to a certain degree, there's truth. My necklace literally that I wear every day is memento mori, remember one's death. Like, you don't want to be fucking... Uh, haphazardly like running around and doing shit you know with with no intentionality mm-hmm. but at the same time to like stress yourself up over shit just because you don't you, you don't like where you're at right now i think it's a little ludicrous i think you can have complete enjoyment of the present moment and, and and love what you're doing right now yeah and still want more and have the drive to go do it yeah but i think that model only becomes really valuable or effective when what you're doing right now and what you plan to do in the future is things you genuinely want to do and love to do. Mm -hmm. If it's from a place of like, I just need to do it to survive almost mentality where like that anxiety is driving you like, dude, if I don't do this, I'm not going to be able to fucking live or, you know, I'm not going to be able to like operate, whatever that, you know, crazy thought is. What's it, 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 it then becomes, you know, uh, irrelevant what you're actually doing. And I don't think that's healthy because then you're going down the wrong path. And at the end of the day, you're like, you get up to the top of the mountain, you're like, fuck, I'm on the wrong mountain to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, gratitude is such a big unlock that I think a lot of entrepreneurs aren't actually utilizing because 
if they do it, they feel like they're going to lose that edge and they don't. And that's why I said 99% of the time you, you, you can actually enjoy the moment, enjoy mm-hmm. the journey and want more. And this is where guys like Hermosi, he's achieved so much. And now he's out here saying like, Hey guys, it's actually the journey, not the destination, you know? Um, to the 1% where I think the 1% it becomes useful of like, not necessarily not having gratitude, but the other emotion that comes into play is not stress and anxiety, shame or guilt out of like, you know, running from something, but anger. Yeah. I think anger is actually a really powerful emotion yeah, a, that I don't know if, I, I don't know, I don't have enough data to say what, how everyone feels about it. But, um, I know at the retreat, one of the guys was bringing up, like he's been angry lately and he doesn't know how to manage it. I think anger is a really powerful emotion if it's used yeah, intentionally, yeah. like to take action. If you're just sitting there being angry and fucking kicking rocks, like, what are yeah. you doing? Like, that's not, obviously it's not going to be helpful, but if you get angry yeah. at your actions and you're like, dude, what the fuck, man? Like get better. And then you, you use that anger as, as fuel to go and get better. I think that's where anger actually becomes really useful. And I've used it many times in my life mm-hmm. where it's like, I'll get pissed at myself. Like yeah. you ate the food last night or you did whatever. Don't just get pissed and then fucking keep the cycle going. Get pissed, figure out what, what you did and go take action and use that as like a, a scar, almost like a wound to say like, you don't yeah. want that to happen again. Mm-hmm. Right. But that anger can be useful. And that's why I said that 1% totally. I think is useful to not have the gratitude of the situation. You can have gratitude that it yep. caused you anger. Sure. But I think the other, the, the, the 1% is where it's like using anger to actually take action. Yeah. hundred percent. Right? Uh, I've heard this stat many times. Like people are, are, you're more mo- motivated by the, the pain of the thing rather than the pleasure of the thing. Yeah. Um, always like a like a guy who 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 is an mma fighter and loses like the biggest fight of his career and mm-hmm. he's got a comeback mm-hmm. he's gonna be fucking choked yeah i think he's gonna uh use all that to literally be in the gym six hours a day training hard like right. eating right like so um yeah showed up in, in my life many times as well too and i think um fine f- use that whatever that anger is to you just 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 hold it and then just just start just ripping it in uh whatever as- facet of life that you're mm-hmm. you're working towards mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah um what else happened in your world in the last i think it's been two weeks since we did a podcast like what what's what's happened in your world that uh that's yeah. been you know on your mind uh yeah this this week a, a few few days ago another thing to go back on the uh why I'm so grateful that, you know, to, to be a part of Founder West now is just my recent conversation with Matt's girlfriend, uh, Victoria. She's our head of design for Founder West and like helps out with all the branding. And I mean, you guys see like some pretty sick stuff going on with Founder West and she spearheads all that. So she's, uh, she's going to be coaching me for free on my personal brand Mm -hmm. Uh, and like growing it, ideating, getting the b-roll connecting me with videographers editors all that like all the talent that we use she is offering her services that she does for other founders and like she has her own brand too not just helps us out at founder us so um yeah i mean again it's so so grateful i was not expecting it but it's really and we had this conversation before um the the event and we were going to mountain bike and you're like, so where's the brand, bro? Like, where's the next reel coming from? And I was talking about how, uh, how, you know, I, I really recognize the importance of mentorship and, and getting help and just, you know, paying for it and, and just shortening that learning curve. And so I took the action message, Victoria, just like for help on like who she could point me to and it ends up being her and she's not going to charge me. And so that's, that's something that's uh, new. It's really kind of like, relit because now I have Victoria who's like saying, I'm going to meet with you every two weeks, send me all your stuff. Like what we can chat anytime. Um, and so like now that that's out there and we've had this hour discussion that this is what I want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. Like I'm so fired up to get those clips, to shoot that B roll constantly, like fall in love with the creation process. And because I have, now Matt knows about the brand. Matt jumps on the call when me and Victoria are talking, uh-huh. by the way. They're just because they, you know, they're just, yeah. and he's like, 
he was just like joking around. He's like, bro, that sounds like a fucking irresistible offer, bro. You think you should take that up kind of thing. Cause she's like saying that she's going to do yeah. this for free. And they both talked about it after too, or before, like if they were going to charge, if Victoria should charge me and just out of the goodness of both of their hearts, you know, like, yeah. So that's a, you know, huge, huge initiative mm-hmm. for me this year. And that's, uh, um, that's what I'm working on, working on last night, this morning. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, uh, is that the question? It was like, what's new in your life? Yeah, like what's going on? What's yeah. been what's been sitting on your mind? That, um, I just like, oh man, it's just right there. It's just it's just right there. I, I can see myself doing that, and and having a, a brand and and having that trust and having just a, a brand that that people would know, uh, and that really excites me. Um, I've been thinking about so much Colombia, um, moving to Colombia in mm-hmm. July, um. Yeah, we're 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 fucking doing it. Finally, it's something I've been a dream of mine for for a while, and um, now there's actual real action behind mm-hmm. it. Um, from from this is we're moving with likely Justin and um, uh, Alex from Toronto. Um, so y- yeah, that just got me going because I wanted to travel for so long. Um, going to Japan in December next year. You are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, snowboarding. Uh, get the old Japan. Mm-hmm. so with andy mm. um yeah open open invitation <laughs> but uh mm. we're planning on booking it in revelstoke like this december or yeah yeah this december so 2024 yeah damn yeah a couple weeks yeah well um i've just oh, what, one thing that's we'll just keep flowing this is actually what's been on my mind i've had an insane urgency to travel um since i've been like and i don't it's not gonna stop it's like i've this has been I wanted to go to Bali two years ago. I didn't. Mm-hmm. It was still because COVID and they weren't accepting travelers. Yeah. And that I've had this d- burning desire to get out of here and be, do it solo. I just want to go myself. Um, and it's been like, like one of those, like, fuck, like almost like, fuck it. Like, like Matt, like, I'd love to just take the month off. Like, could, and I think that could happen. Um, just let me go for a bit. I just want to go um, as a learning experience for myself to, for growth to become a better global citizen and just, just expand my perspective. Um, so, so yeah, I've been thinking about it constantly, but like, where do I go? Can I go right now? Even though I, I know I won't, um, there is a bit of a timing thing here, but, um, fortunately, like I'm, I'm really glad to hear about, you know, Columbia happening because mm-hmm. it's going to, to satisfy that urgency. Um, but then like the places like Japan and stuff too. And I think it's part of it just as I have the work from home. I've been a great opportunity. Um, and I, I have the means to be, and the resources to be able to do that mm-hmm. right now. Like I can just go right now and come back and be fine kind of thing. And so that's got me just going right now. Mm. Just, yeah, just, yeah. I've been thinking about it so much, man. Mm. You think that's why, uh, you're, you're, excited about it right now or is there something else that's you know come in recently that's amplified that desire because obviously it's been around but it seems like maybe it's a little bit more heightened right now yeah it well it's now because i have like real means to do so Mm. um you mean like like the money to do yeah yeah yeah, resources yeah i i would have had it before but i would have been thinking about like oh i gotta get back to work i gotta get back to work kind of thing i'm in a place Mm -hmm. now where I could bounce for for a bit and still and and also I have the one thing to shed light on here is I have the which I before I didn't I have the confidence and belief that if something did go astray I'd be to, like I'm gonna be fine mm. I'm gonna I'm resourceful enough to, I'm gonna find other ways to make money kind of thing and just like I have that confidence and trust in myself that dude you have enough proof from where you've been to where you are now that uh you're going to be all right in Mm -hmm. whatever situation meeting. And then that just, that just means like, God forbid, like I went away for three months and then it just, you know, the opportunity like fell or I wasn't here with found arrest or whatever that is like, that's all good. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I have a better mindset Mm -hmm. around who I am and what I'm capable of. But then yes, of course I do have the, the resources and, and the money to be able to just fuck off for a bit. So, so because of that, it's like really kind of been pe- perpetuating, like, let's fucking go, dude. Like you hit this, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and it's, you know, thinking about, Hey, like I'm going to settle down at some point. Like now is, 
it really is the time to to do it yeah 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 well it's all on the horizon yeah for sure which will be exciting there'll be lots of uh exciting things happening uh to share about and, and uh, totally. talk about right so yeah how about yourself um like what's on my mind yeah well on my end i would say the biggest thing is i've kind of i've taken the official step really and i say official it's very much just like mentally taking a step for myself of going from above men 1.0 to above men 2.0 and like that natural evolution of building the business and so that's got me really fired up um of this rebuild almost so basically what's going on is and i was having a really good conversation with dan givon in uh, we went to like a, a a sauna cold plunge spot in toronto and i've been thinking about this i you know on the on the the plane ride to Toronto, I was like mapping all this out. And then even on the plane ride back, I was thinking about it more in the last couple of mornings, I've been thinking about it, but the evolution of above men has started with like the, obviously the idea. And then it just started super crude with just me coaching guys with like no supporting, uh, content or assets. And it was very just like, Hey, when we're talking, this is what you're getting from above men. And then when we're not talking, like there's not a whole lot that you're going to be able to extract. Now it's like, hey, you can talk with me. And then outside, there's like a community. There's uh, all the content, the module. There's a bunch of worksheets. There's just tons of assets now that I've built up over the last year and a half of uh, that has allowed me to move the business forward. So it started out with like one-to-one coaching where I was charging basically like nine grand for six months of my time. Then it went from that down to uh, group coaching. So now it was like six grand for four months of my time plus access to the whole program because I built it up over the course of the one-to-one and then I switched. So now it's group coaching, some of my time, plus a lot of the above men content, right? Like I have all of above men 1.0 program, you know, available for use outside of working with me. So that content really directs guys to solving the problem with whatever that is, right? Like the end goals, energy mastery, et cetera. Uh, So now that I'm there and I've built an infrastructure around higher ticket again charging 5800 for four months i now realize like my long-term goal and i've known this for a while i just didn't know like what that path forward would look like and so what i'm realizing is like the next step is actually rebuilding and re-engineering the entire program to cater to a uh, lower ticket opportunity where i actually going keep going down right like nine grand six grand and now I'm dropping even further into like a $99 a month category. And initially everyone's like, why do you want to do that? Like that just doesn't make sense up front, but it's because I'm very just uh, mission driven, right? Like I'm trying to give this information out to as many men as possible while still satisfying my own needs of like, I want to make a ton of money and I want to have a certain lifestyle. So it's not like I'm going to go and do a nonprofit. A, that's just not sustainable. But at the same time, I know there's a way that I can put this information in the hands of more guys while uh, still having a huge impact. And so recreating the whole program in the sense of taking this this huge uh, brick of content, which I think right now there's like 30 hours of content and it's all chunked up in like large one to two hour blocks and it's a little bit more vague and there's a, there's a lot of direction needed on my end to point people into the right sectors of the program now i'm rebuilding it where it's very self-explanatory where it's like here's the nutrition section here's the movement section here's the sleep section here's the discipline section here's the goal section and then within that it's like how to calculate macros here's what macros are best here's what micronutrients you need da 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 and like make it very self-explanatory where it's a lot easier to have it do it yourself type uh program and uh and in doing so the videos are going to be shorter snappier to the point And so now that's going to allow me to, I think, flourish in a low ticket environment where I can bring on guys that maybe aren't as um, set up and integrated with themselves as some of the guys in my program, like, say, Sasha, where, you know, he's been running a very successful business for the last couple of years, done a lot of self-development work himself. And now I'm just like an amplifier of his, you know, progress where it's someone that's like, 
hey, I really haven't done a ton of work on myself, but I have enough motivation to look for a solution to start doing more. And then above men can be that vehicle from A to Z, getting their health, their mindset up and running, their confidence as a man up and running using the above man community, which I'm going to call it the above man academy. And, uh, and doing it through short snappy videos that someone can consume three or four of them at a time and then go back to work or whatever that might be. And so that transition from 1.0, which is like the threshold is guys that have 5,800, they're pretty well self-developed and anyone below that, it's going to be tough for them to survive in that environment to guys that can literally jump in hundred bucks. Like the money, the, the finances shouldn't be a, a limiting factor now for a lot of guys, if any, really. Um, and the, the skill set or the, the, the foundations that they have built prior to coming in can be much lower, right? Like you could literally have not a clue about your nutrition, never gone to the gym, have no confidence in yourself, but as long as you have the willingness, like above men's here to serve that type of man. And I really think this is going to be a super powerful step as a next one, as I start to build my audience in a wider array, I know there's been already a ton of guys that haven't been able to join above men and it pains me because I'm like, dude, I just want to help as many guys as possible. And so this is the the next step towards that mission of how can I literally help as many guys as possible while maintaining a profitable business. Um, and so starting to build that out, starting to really like map out what that looks like, get into the module design, start to put that out in the community, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, really, really excited for that. Obviously you guys will hear more and more about that as that you know gets built. But um, just fires me up because what I thought I was going to be doing from the start of Above Men to now where it's come from, it's like it's felt like I can get to that goal much quicker. And what that looks like in terms of what I offer is is become more and more clear as I've gone down this path. And I needed to do those first two steps. Yeah. Like for context, after the first two or three months of running Above Men part time, I was able to go full time and live off the income now till or since then till now, which I would say is a great accomplishment. And I'm very proud of myself for doing that. And I wouldn't have been able to survive if I all of a sudden started charging 99 yeah, bucks exactly. a month yeah. from the get go. But now it's like, oh, shit, like it's not like I'm going to drop the 58 because there's still a place for that. Like guys still want to be coached. The higher level guys still want to be coached more intimately. But now I have the flexibility to offer this lower ticket thing and still be able to cater to the the coaching, uh, the guys that want more one to one, right? Like I was just talking to, you know, a big entrepreneur that I mentioned yesterday. I won't name any names until it's official, but it's like that guy's not going to join the 99 per month thing, like go through it on his own accord. Like he wants done for you. So there's a place for these higher ticket, but I don't want to be the 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 I don't want that to be the reason why I can't serve more guys. And I actually, what's really interesting is I, I get a lot of fulfillment working with these guys in a different way than I do with the the guys that can't maybe afford that and are early on in the journey, like the 18, 19 year olds that are super hungry and they have no idea where to start. Like that was me. Like I want to be like I get the most fired up to help those guys. And this is why I think I'm so adamant of like getting into this 2.0 and getting this up and running. Because when I work with those guys, I get the most fired up and, and I feel most fulfilled. Uh, and I think long term, that's where I want to hang out. And that's why I think I'm trying to move there as quickly as possible. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what's going on on, on my end, uh, aside from a completely fresh, fresh haircut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually forgot to ask, like, yeah. how are you feeling that right now? How uh, how J-Bone like it? She likes it more than my long hair. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which actually I think I do as well. I was gonna ask, like, how long are we going for this? How like is I there's probably no timeline, but like Well now having the haircut, um I'm in the current my current state of mind is like I'm gonna keep this for at least, you know, a few years, I think. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. That's nuts. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Is that, no, I was gonna say I already I've said to you like off off screen like it does it does look good I do yeah. like it so yeah it's just kind of I I just remember when we first became like friends yeah like we were talking about the fucking flow and the mullet and shit like that and like it's it's still it still hits you know but like it's just it's just it's funny to look back on that and just like think like um 
oh fuck bro i need to cut I need to get the, the sides trimmed that was only like three months ago and then yeah it's such a big shift for you and yeah yeah now i have no hair well you know what's interesting is one of the reasons why i wanted to have a mullet mm. and like long flowy hair was i thought at the time is that that was going to be one of my trademarks in my personal brand like that was going to be one of the things that made me be mine <laughs> Like, yeah. that was one of the things that was going dis- to uh, distinguish me amongst guys right like and i was leaning on that using the lens of hermosi and the handlebar mustache right like i don't know if you knew that yeah, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. Okay. he literally had that trademarked i think at one point and that was part of like the freaking sale when they sold gym launches it was such a fundamental part of their branding that uh that it became like a trademark within the brand which is crazy but everyone started to know Hermosi or it became more he became more um familiar not the through nose strips. through this well that's his next thing though yeah. he doesn't do the handlebar mustache now he now he does the nose strips okay so yeah. the thing about Hermosi is he finds these little like uh hooks and he really buys into them and puts them on his his uh his sleeve and it's like this is who I am this is what makes me me in one of his videos he actually talks about it in a in a different light so I've been playing with what are those things for me right you know another one for Hermosi is like never skip dessert like that's a tagline that is like on his stories he's always using and he understands that that resonates with the market so I thought the mullet for me was going to be that now getting the cut you know it was interesting after I got the haircut I put a story up and I said does this haircut make me more mass make me look more masculine than my other cut and I added the poll And it was outstanding. Like I had like 40 people vote on it. There was three out of the 40 that said, I don't look more masculine. And three of those people like, you know, no profile picture, no whatever. And then the the other 37 were all just like, this makes you more look more masculine than your old haircut. And if we go and look at who am I trying to become? What is my brand trying to represent? It's trying to represent masculinity in a lot of ways, that healthy version of masculinity. It's like, hmm. Instantly, as soon as I saw them, like, that kind of leans on I should keep this haircut and maybe but, this haircut isn't the defining thing that's like this is the thing that's going to make you stand out because yeah, a ton of guys have this kind of haircut but the other thing that I'm currently wearing which is my blue light blocking glasses yeah this is something that's like instantly resonated with a bunch of people I've had countless people already in the short time wearing these specific ones be like what are those why do you wear those what are they for right especially when you're wearing them like out Mm-hmm. you know and then yeah. even on the podcast like there's a, like a trademark thing that's why i went and grabbed them I'm like dude i want to put them on um so it, it's kind of like hey i think it's over here and then all of a sudden oh wait it's actually this thing so i think these are going to be one of my trademarks for sure um i don't know if there's more but for sure this one is definitely something that's resonated and i think these other things like the primal bowl you know the above nuts right but like for me as a character this is it it's not actually my hair and i thought it was going to be my hair so it's been an interesting shift, but my hair is now added to it in the sense of I look more masculine, as I think people have alluded to. But uh, the trademark piece, I think, is more this, which that's what the hair was originally intended to do. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Hmm. Yeah. One thing about like the the hair thing is like, just I maybe it's because like all these other figures, or maybe like a guy like like Tate who like speak about masculinity, but. I think you'd still be looked at through a masculine lens based on who you are. Hundred percent, I totally agree. Yeah, I would but, just one thing I would say there. Yeah, I, and, and I agree. But the interesting piece that, not the interesting, the important lens about the the look is the attention span on social media. So if you are on social media and you see this guy you've never seen mm-hmm. before. And instantly his look is masculine and it's like, oh, wait, you know, there's something here that resonates and you might not even pick up that it is the hair or the vibe or whatever, but that at least is going to place me in a certain frame the moment you see me. Because otherwise I say I have the longer hair and it's not that I can't look masculine, but maybe I don't look as masculine. Then my actions need to then back up me being masculine. My energy needs to back up. Whereas what if I were to look masculine right off the bat and show up as a masculine individual with the with that energy that certainty in myself 
now all of a sudden there's more congruency that when you're putting yourself out there from a digital standpoint, I think there's actually, it, it's going to be more effective. And that's specifically why I put that poll out originally is like, could I actually step more into this role that I'm trying to play digitally as my personal brand, which is showing up as a masculine character in the world, right? Of course, long hair or not, I know I, I'm a certain way and I operate a certain way and I've had compliments and uh, feedback about myself regardless of my haircut. But how can I lean more into that role digitally as a character, the looks, et cetera? And I think yeah. this plays into it, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, let it rip. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Which kind of, you know, again, something for you to think about. And I've talked to a few guys like this and it, it seems to be something that isn't readily there for people thinking about but who you are and the digital version of you are two separate beings and even though people say like be your authentic self etc i still think you can be your authentic self like i'm still being my authentic self while having this haircut it's not like i'm not being any less authentic to myself uh but how you show up digitally and we say that we we, we look at this as like the higher highlight reel everyone's showing their best self quote unquote but it's how you show up digitally and just as a personal brand can uh, it is typically separate from how you are. And you can normally manipulate this a little bit more strategically to play into your favor of having more people ask, who is this guy or having a better, you know, authoritative frame or whatever frame you want to go. I think it's important for you to think about like, how, how do you want to show up online? Not only from, again, the style, the type of content you're putting out there. Yes. That's the things we're thinking about. But what is your actual appearance? You know, like, uh, I mean, Tate's a perfect example of that. Uh, like Iman Gadji is another example of that. Like, you know, if you look at Iman, he has a certain appearance and energy that he's crafted in the digital world that has made people think of him a certain way, right? And it's distinguished him in a certain light, right? Uh, and you can look at many examples, like certain guys go to the extent of like, literally having a mask on, you know, marshmallow is another example, the, the DJ, like yeah. he's created this digital persona where it's like, he has a fucking helmet on that he always wears. And that's created this, this version of him online. That's like, this is the character that he's playing, but at the same time, it's through an authentic lens. Most of the time, not everyone's doing that, mm. but it's what things can you put in place that separate you from yourself or not separate, but allow that digital version of you to amplify what you're trying to portray as that genuine version of yourself. You know, like there's gonna be certain characteristics that you can start to put out there and almost socially engineer that will allow you to get the, the thing you're trying to get across through the authentic version of you more clearly. And going back to me, my haircut, like if I'm, if everyone's saying I'm looking more masculine, well, I'm getting that, that, that message across of being masculine and portraying that masculine lifestyle more clearly through how I'm showing up on the, in the digital world, you know? Yeah. And I, I, that's why I like the name biz athlete. Cause there's a lot, you can play with that. Yeah. And uh, how could, you know, wh where is that maybe take you? Maybe it's not that at all, but it's just something to think about. It's like, what online persona are you creating and how is that going to be in alignment with, with who you are and what attributes do you want to amplify to? Yeah. Right? I just thought of a sick reel. Actually, yes, oh, let's that. go. Damn, that could be sick. Because I, I think I know where you, I, I, I know where you're going with this on the, on, on the appearance thing. I was just trying to think of like, and then you said biz athlete. I just had this idea, which we can talk about after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, um, so we wrap it up. <sighs> wrap it up. What are we at? Two hours? Oh, no. Hour and forty-five at least. No, hour thirty. I was 35. Oh, I thought I heard that go off three times, and the third one was like 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Well, that's the recording. It says hour 35. All so right. Anyways, there it is. I think it was a, it was a solid episode. That was solid. That was a yeah. nice flow. Yep. But it's the, those are the best ones, man. Yeah. So give us a follow. Uh, it'd be very much appreciated if you subscribe on Spotify if you're listening. And if you're watching this on YouTube subscribe and uh, we will see you on the next one. Peace.